Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or it's doing good for me. This is Eagle Eyes on Tech. I am the Eagle Falcon. This is not a full episode. I thought over and over again, should I come up with a different opening for this sort of thing? But I couldn't think of anything, so here we are, and I suddenly realized I don't care. So, it should be fairly obvious why this showed up in your podcast feed. It's fairly obvious as to why this has showed up now. It is because there was a major announcement, and I want to get my thoughts on the Apple announcement out now. All right? So we pretty much got five things to talk about. First off, the revealing of the name of the new theater, the new Apple TV, the new Apple Watch, the iPhone 8, and the iPhone X. All right, we got those five things. I'm going to quickly go over them. It's going to be about 20 minutes, and I'll talk in more detail on them on Saturday at 12 when I normally do the podcast live on twitch.tv slash eagle underscore falcon. All right, so... Let's go. First off, as I mentioned in the last episode of the podcast, the Apple campus is done. And it probably was announced at that time, but I just never saw it. But the name of the theater that all the keynotes are going to be in now is called the Steve Jobs Theater. You might be thinking, I am pointing this out to go, oh boy, here we go. The cult of Steve Jobs is back. I'm not, actually. I actually think the name of the theater is extremely appropriate. I mean, let's think about what Steve Jobs actually did. There's pretty much two things he did, three things he did at Apple. No, I'll take that back. Two things. Two things he did at Apple. He said no to bad ideas. And he put on impressive keynotes. Very impressive ones. To the point where it is extremely difficult to recapture the magic Steve Jobs put on the stage. And to try and mimic it, it just seems gimmicky. So to call the theater the Steve Jobs Theater... 100% agree. I love it, though the actual presentation of it did start drifting out of the, yeah, okay, I can respect that decision, into the, oh boy, it's the cult of Mac again. Yay! So, that's the first thing out of the way. Next up, I'll actually go in order of the things that were announced. Next up is the Apple Watch. Series 3 Apple Watch is confirmed it did come out and just as the rumor said it does support lte now i still need to do a little bit more research i need to do some questioning on various sources i have why is that happening (laughs) where the (laughs) did that play from Oh, the, my thing of the keynote actually, uh, all right. Anyway, enough of technical difficulties where I'm clearly just recording this live and not editing this later. All right. So the new watch with LTE is, is going to be out. Um, it's going to cost a little bit more to get one with LTE than one without, and they're still going to have a series one available at a low, low price. I believe the pricing is like 400 with GPS and cellular, 329, oh wait no, 329 with GPS and cellular, oh wait no, it has two different screen sizes, that's right. And that then requires me to start deciphering the thing. Alright, so 399 GPS and cellular with the bigger screen, 329 with the slightly smaller screen, and like 225 for series one. And I'm trying to quickly guide through their page and find one without the cellular, and I cannot. 
but that's the main thing is that it has cellular. I need to look up a few more details. They did mention that they want to try and avoid having the phone, having the watch have its own separate number. Just have it use the cellular to get to your phone and use your phone. So that let's say you left your phone in a locker, you could take your watch with you, which is waterproof, and make calls on that. Love the idea. I need to do more research on that and get everything down for it. But the presentation for it, beautiful. Though, I think they did push the health aspects a little too hard. Just a little. But... What are you going to do? Alright. Well, alright, here we go. Watch Series 3. It, you can pre-order it on the 15th. So in three days. It'll be available September 22nd. The same thing's going to apply to the Apple TV 4K, which is the next thing that was announced. Now this one, unfortunately, I didn't see a whole lot of reasoning for the different prices there's one thing i'm not entirely certain why this is but the new apple tv 4k has storage capacity again and i'm not entirely sure why so again i'm gonna have to question some people see if i can't get some answers But yeah, for 32 gigs, it is a buck 79. For 64 gigs, I said a buck 79. 179 dollars for 64 gigs. 199 dollars. I'm pretty sure, though I could be wrong. The competition is half the price. For the same amount of features. I think the Apple TV is starting to flirt back into the territory of not being worth it anymore. And they need to be very, very careful about that. So. That's the Apple 4K, t Apple TV 4K. iPhone 8. First off, I am stunned that it was actually called the, the iPhone 8. But then again, um, the difference between the 6S and the 7 was minimal. The difference between the, the 7 and the 8 is also minimal exterior-wise. I mean, the biggest difference you can tell right off the bat between the two is the fact that there is now glass on both the front and the back. And supposedly the glass is very, very durable. And I'm sure there's going to be people who are dumber than me who are going to take sledgehammers to their phones to test just how durable it is. And we'll see. We will see. It's got a new processor in it, updated camera. There's only two capacities now, 64 and 256 gigs. You have iPhone 8, 4.7 inch retina display, and the uh, and the uh, iPhone 8 Plus, 5.5 inch retina display. And there's a new A11 Bionic chip. I'm not sure exactly why call it Bionic. But I'm sure there's going to be stuff down the road as to why. Other than they wanted to keep their... I don't know. They just wanted a random sci-fi word, I guess. It's the best I can come up with. But yeah, that's that. Oh, one actually one one last thing. The color choices on the iPhone 8. On the iPhone 7 there were seven color choices. Gold, rose gold, silver, space gray, and jet black. iPhone 8 uh, now has gold, silver, and space gray. That's it. And you must be thinking, oh, it's because 
the iPhone X or iPhone 10, depending on what you want to call it, is going to be the replacement on that. On, on is going to have all the cool colors. Not really, no. iPhone X. Let's go over that real quick. Capacity. There's only two capacities: 64 and 256 gigs. Um, the glass goes all the way to the edge, but doesn't curve over the edge. So they're calling it bezel less, nothing but screen. Not really. Not from the pictures I've seen. The Samsung phones give a better illusion of no bezels because of that curved screen. But at the same time, that curved screen has proven to be very expensive and also a little bit on the fragile side from what I've seen. So that could be the reason why Apple didn't go with that. And I can't blame them for that. But again, glass on the front, glass on the back, just like the iPhone 8. Now, there's only one size of the iPhone X, and that's 5.8 inches. So it's going to be the size of a Pro Phone, or the Phablets, as everyone else calls them. There is no home button. We already knew that. Pretty much everything I said was a possibility and a rumor, and I was very skeptical of it actually being true. Everything was true. Every single bit of it. Home button's gone. Touch ID is gone. That gnat that was in front of my face is now gone. The iPhone X is using OLED. It is also using the A11 Bionic chip. So it's basically just all hand gestures. Um, swipe up from the bottom to get to home anytime, which conflicts a little bit with what already exists in it. It's going to be interesting. But probably the more interesting thing is actually what they did for Face ID, the facial recognition program. I was very skeptical it was going to be good. And then I find out the, the technology they're actually using. Apple calls it Real Sense. And if you know anything about the tech I've talked about, you know Real Sense is a thing that Apple has done in the past. And by Apple, I mean Intel. I have a Real Sense camera. It's sitting over in my laptop bag. It uses an infrared camera, an invisible dot grid display. And another component I can't remember off the top of my head. B the point is that it's a camera technology that takes 3D images. So yeah, that whole thing I said about it's probably possible, though Apple says it won't be, that you can hold a picture and, and activate it. No, there's no way that's going to work. You are still at risk of like bopping over saying, hey, what are you doing with my phone? And accidentally unlocking it that way. That's still that's still a threat. I still would have thought they would have had Touch ID built into the screen, but that's not the case. They decided to dump that. Everything I've talked about was going to be available for pre-order on the 15th and then available on the 22nd. The iPhone X, however, breaks the rule... And will not be available for pre-order until... Wow, it has let me get awfully far in this... Th okay, there we go. Let me get all the way to the end until it told me no. It's not going to be available until the last week of August and then available for pickup the first week of November. Price for that's going to start at $1,000, go all the way up to $1,149. So there's the current iPhone lineup.
you're going to have... As far as current generation stuff, the iPhone 8 at the bottom, then the iPhone 8 Plus at the mid-tier, and the iPhone X at the absolute top tier. Now granted, this is an early look. Actually no, here, here I just found my page that I had the numbers on. You can tell I'm doing this just right off the bat. I want to get this out so I have my thoughts out there right away. iPhone X pre-order 10-27, October 27th. Available November the 3rd. Alright, what are my thoughts? If you have to be in the iPhone ecosystem, get an iPhone 8 and be happy forever. If you like the bigger screen, get an iPhone 8 Plus and be happy forever. I know the iPhone X is the new hotness. Everyone's going to want it because it's the new hotness. But it just doesn't bring enough to justify the couple hundred dollars more. Now keep in mind, when we're talking these absurd prices, 700, 800, 1000, almost $1200 for a phone, you're only paying a small amount of that when you pick it up and then you're paying the rest over 2 years. That's how phones work here in the US. That's and from what I understand that's a model that's being adopted elsewhere around the world. And, of course, prices will vary based on your location and blah, 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 blah. The only reason you'd buy the iPhone X is to say, I have the iPhone X. Or the iPhone X. Whatever you want to call it. Apple kept calling it the iPhone X. But I'm going to keep calling it the iPhone X to continue the illusion that I that Apple can count. Even though it went iPhone, iPhone 3G, iPhone 3GS, iPhone 4, iPhone 4S, iPhone 5, iPhone 5S, iPhone 6, iPhone 6S, F, iPhone 7, iPhone 8, iPhone 10. Yep, we can count. And I know why they called it the iPhone 10. I'm not making fun of their ability to count. They clearly did it because it's the 10th anniversary iPhone. It's obvious. So. Yeah. Here's what I'm seeing just from the get-go. The Apple TV 4K, I think, is dead on arrival. I think the almost 50% price hike to use 4K visual technology in a world where Foxconn is about to open up an 8K TV factory, you know, 100 miles away from where I'm broadcasting right now, is silly. It's actually, that jump right there is a compelling reason to go switch to something other than an Apple TV. The iPhone X, although it's it's pretty, it's definitely an eye catcher. But in the, on the inside, it's the same as the iPhone 8. I think that camera design on the back is a little, eh. But I'm sure that'll grow on me at given time but really the only thing the iphone x offers is unlocking with my face which i'm fine with unlocking with my fingerprint just fine and other than that the only thing the iphone x offers is animated emojis i'm not even kidding that's a feature because they realize they have a real sense camera inside their phone now they can basically put a small face rig program into the phone. And 
And yeah, even though all you guys who are common listeners to me know what face rig is, and know that the technology of using your face to animate a cartoon panda has existed for a while, Apple will have clearly invented it. And that's not a feature that's compelling enough for me to shell out an additional $200 for my wallet. It just isn't. If I had to upgrade, I would just get an, I would just get an 8 plus and be happy. And I'm sure more frugal people than I would would just go, you know, I'm okay with Android and just go with a cheaper alternative. To each their own, as they say. That watch, on the other hand, that watch, I like. I like that watch a lot. Especially if it means I can keep the same cell phone number, especially if it means that I don't need to have a second data plan just for the watch. If it can just tack on and say, look, it's an accessory of the phone, and it'll use the same limits as the phone, and Apple managed to secure that deal, I'm in. You got me, Apple. You got me on the watch. You finally did it. Take care. I will talk to you Saturday with a real episode.